Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew for Aurora Gameworks and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we'll be making a simple yet expandable pause menu for your game. So first thing that we're going to need for our pause menu is to create the widget. Don't mind this one, I'll just make a new one. <laughs> widget blueprint, pause menu, just like that. We open it up, we have a blank slate. First thing that I like to do for something like a pause menu is add in some background blur. Set the anchor to full screen and set it up just like that. And let's put the blur strength to something around about 10. Next, we're gonna need a vertical box and we want to have the vertical box be under our background blur like this just so that the vertical box has always been rendered on top set our anchor to the center uh, I want to set this to uh, about 800 wide and 500 tall and then we need to center it like so uh, it's always uh, in minus and then half of what the size is. So that'll be minus 250, just like that. Now we need to put in some buttons. Uh, we can put in uh, four buttons for this, for this example. We'll have a resume button, a restart button, a, a options button, but we won't be making the options menu unfortunately today. And then the last button will be a return to main menu button. So we have ourselves four buttons in here. Let's make sure that all of them are set to fill. Just like so. And then we can put some text inside our buttons. Let's make the text just a little bit bigger. In this case, we could go something like 42. Button 1 will be resume. Button 2 will be restart. Button 3 can be options. And button 4 will be main menu. Let's compile and save. Now, before we continue, it's always a good idea to uh, rename all of our buttons, uh, just so that it is easier to work with later on. Let's call this resume button. Restart button. I think you get the idea. just like that. Now we can add a little bit of styling to our buttons. Uh, we can add some spacing to all of our buttons here. Uh, so for instance our padding, uh, let's use 20 as our padding number. And for all of these except the top one, we can go to top here and add in 20 to our padding and then it'll look like this we'll have some nice good uh, spacing between all of our buttons um, there is a spacer uh, piece here inside our little palette tab uh, but having a whole bunch of these inside our vertical box uh, you know it's just a little bit more clutter when really we could do it inside our little uh, padding here so now, real quick, we can uh, continue adding a little bit more styling to our buttons. Uh, we can uh, hold down the control button and select all of our buttons like this. And in our details tab here, we can uh, change a whole bunch of things all at once, like our style and appearance here. So as a default state, I want to have them all black at half transparency. 
and then on pressed and hovered I want to have them uh, be green at half transparency just like that very nice so now we can compile and save that again so now with all that ready we can click on our buttons scroll all the way down to the bottom of our details panel and we want to add the event for on clicked so we can add a little bit of logic to our buttons we can get them to start doing some things um, for our options button uh, it won't really be doing anything uh, I'm gonna add the little node here um, just so that it's the same as the rest but we won't be adding any functions to that because uh, we don't have a, a, a options widget uh, at the moment to work with it but who knows maybe I'll make a future video where we'll make an options menu and that will go nicely on this button click but anyways now that we have all of our button presses here let's compile and save that and before we continue anywhere else we need to go to our little blue man character here and well actually before we go in here we need to make sure that inside our project settings under input action mappings we want to make sure that we have the pause uh, action mapping setup um, so you would just create a new one here and if this was in your final package build you probably want to have this set to the to your like escape key or or any kind of key like that you want but just for testing purposes we're going to have this uh, binded to our P key because pressing escape while you're testing in the viewport will just take you out of the viewport and stop your current uh, simulation so we have that set to P and inside our third person character we want to type in pause and under action events we should see our pause just like that next on pressed we're going to want to get set game paused and we want to check that and then we want to create our widget set our owning player get player controller um, in in most cases where you'll be able to pause a game like this it'll be in a in a single player scenario so you'd want to set your player index always to the zero um, this gets a little bit more complicated with 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 more than one player but it's nothing to worry about too much and then we want to get our pause menu just like that and we want to add it to our viewport now if we have a a a gameplay heads up display already running in the background like maybe your your character has some sort of mini map um, you then want to make sure that this pause widget is always going to be above that so I like to set the gameplay HUD widget to zero on on the Z order and then we'll set our pause menu widget to one uh, it, it also helps because we have the the uh, background blur going on in the background so it should uh, blur any um, sort of background HUD elements that we don't want to be looking at while in the pause menu um, it's always good uh, gameplay design to um, have uh, contrast between different elements when we want to be focusing on different things at different times um, but yeah now that we have that we want to grab off our get player controller and set show mouse cursor we want to check that and then we want to uh, set uh, we, yeah we want to set our input mode to UI only and then we want the player controller to be hooked up just like that so now that we have all of all of the logic set up for our input action uh, button press we want to go to our pause menu and we want to get all of our buttons that we have here set up and ready now on our resume button 
we want to do a little bit of the of the uh, opposite of what we did when we created and opened up our pause menu. Um, want to get our player controller. We want to set our show mouse cursor, and we want to turn that off. And then we want to. Um, get our input mode and set it back to game only just like that we then want to get our set paused or sorry set game paused and have this unticked so then the game can resume and then we want to remove the pause menu from the widget so we can go remove from parent see it says removes the widget from its parent widget. If this widget was added to the player screen of viewport, it'll be removed from those containers, which means basically we are deleting this pause menu because we don't need it anymore. We have resumed the game. Next for our restart button, we want to get our set game paused again and have it unpaused. And then we want to um, open level and basically just reopen the level that we're already in if we're wanting to restart this level. Um, this bit of the logic might work differently depending on the kind of game that you're making so there'll have to be a little bit of um, trial and error going on here but uh, for most simple games this will work great so the current map that we're in is tutorial map 1 or tut map 1 you can press F2 and then Control C to get the exact name. Um, it is case sensitive, so we want to make sure that it's the exact same like that. Uh, we're not doing anything for our options button, and then for our on-clicked main menu button, we want to do the same, but we want to open up back to our main menu. In this case, our main menu, I've just simply titled it Your Main Menu. It's a little just template thing that I've made just for this project and just like that we want to compile and save actually really quickly before we go and test our little pause menu um, we're gonna want to copy and paste this code and we want to put this here before the restart button um, this is so then we can actually go and continue playing our game without it sort of freezing up on us because uh, if we uh, don't add this bit back into the restart button section then the, uh, the mouse will still be on the screen and we won't be able to control our character. We don't need to do this on the main menu button part because, um, because if we're in the pause menu and we've already got the cursor up and it's in the uh, input mode UI, uh, it should be all right because our main menu will, you know, it will be another widget where we'll need to have our mouse cursor and we'll need to have the UI uh, mode set anyway, so that'll be fine. So we can copy, sorry, not copy, uh, uh, compile and save, make sure that we have this all saved. And now we can test our little pause menu to see if it works. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to jump off the ledge. And while we're in mid-air, we're going to pause. Just like that. Cool. So we have our mouse on screen and everything works. We highlight the buttons and they turn green. Options doesn't do anything at the moment. But if we click on resume, the mouse goes away. And we have full control regained of our character. Just like that. Uh, we can click on restart, the mouse goes away, and we were back where we were at the beginning of the level, just like that. And then if I want to pause the game and we want to go to our main menu, this is your main menu, and then you would have the button that says go and play your game, let's pretend it's this, you play it, um, and yeah, we're back. So just like that, it's a very simple little main menu, and you can keep on adding on to this. Uh, for instance, uh, if I think that if your game has very fast action reflex 
sort of stuff going on, you would probably want to add in a little, like a little bit of a, a timeline world dilation fade. And what that means is basically um, you would have your game paused and the speed of time uh, is set to zero. And then you, you would want it to gradually fade in uh, sort of going from a slow-mo back into um, sort of like a normal speed. That's something that I've done in the game that I made called Polyrun. I'll actually have some footage up on the screen of it right now. You see that when I go and, and pause the game while we're running and there's lots of obstacles that we have to dodge and everything, I made it in my game that when you resume, uh, it will gradually fade from paused uh, into uh, back into the gameplay and it sort of gives the player a chance to sort of uh, adjust and get ready to dodge some obstacles again. Uh, if you want to watch a tutorial on how to work with slow-mo stuff there is a video that I've made uh, that specifically works with slow motion and time dilation. But yeah, that's about it, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video and it helped you in your project, make sure to give this video a like, comment any questions that you have, and uh, if you want, you can go and check out the game that I made on Steam. It's called Polyrun. Uh, it's a simple, uh, endless runner game, very, very nicely polished with lots of content and lots of uh, lots of cu customization items. Um, a very good time waster sort of game. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Take care, everyone.